Welcome, welcome to Arizona Real Estate News. I'm doing my Rick Helps Real Estate Traveling Roadshow Edition, hooked up to Starlink Satellite. So if we happen to pop off and you see a little circle going around, it's Elon Musk's fault, not mine. <laughs> Having a hard time staying connected. So, But last night, I was on a podcast for two hours, no issues. So I hope as we're recording this one on the 10th, I won't have that problem. But welcome, everybody. Thank you. You too. How are welcome, doing? welcome back. And uh, I am in uh, Caliente, Nevada, which is about halfway through the state. And tomorrow I'll be driving four and a half hours to get up to Wells, Nevada. So tomorrow's going to be the longest part of the trip, not because of mileage, but there's just nothing between here and Wells, Nevada. I mean, nothing. And so you fill up the gas tank and you just go. <laughs> yeah that's so. so boring that's like driving across texas i swear if i never drive across texas again it might be too soon texas oh, yeah. and oklahoma oh. is the same no. way. Oh, oklahoma yeah no, no horrible this is worse than oklahoma have you driven oklahoma yeah i spent my that's... childhoods there yeah i'm oh. well aware <laughs> and just i'm sorry for any <laughs> i'm sorry for anybody who lives there <laughs> <laughs> well, we got some interesting stuff today. Let me turn my uh, little ringy dingy off here. We're going to start with Pat and why? Because Pat, it is May 10th and we've all been waiting for May 10th. And uh, we were hoping to get some uh, um, wild movements and stuff. So what say you today, Mr. Pat? What's my rate, McMaster's? Yeah, I mean, um, I couldn't get any sleep last night. I was sleepless, <laughs> sleepless in Phoenix all night long, you know. But um, let me just, uh, am I presenting, flip my screen? You're going to flip my screen there? There we go. You are I mean, now. yeah, we had, we had a good day. I mean, basically that the bonds, five and a half coupon was up 34 basis points. Ten-year treasury was down eight, nine basis points. You can see here we got the trend on March 3rd. We've just been slowly slinking, obviously, down. And um, pretty much the expectations for the CPI were pretty much right on the screws as far as expectations. So the market kind of showed a good day saying, hey, we like it. So, I mean, um, there's a couple of tidbits within that, you know, those numbers. It was, once again, Barry was saying that, um, you know, there's this range that we've been playing with, obviously, if you stretch out the numbers. Um, let's see here. You, you're, we're kind of stuck in this range um, here, and we saw obviously a spike in March first. But you know, Barry was saying, um, you know, the main focus was on the core rate. I mean, everything was. He goes a year over year inflation declined from like five percent down to four point nine, so it was a little bit lower than expected. So the market applauded it. Um, you know, it's, he said that inflation has declined. But he said he said inflation's peaked from 9.1 and it is making progress every month. So um, he says the shelter costs, you know, rose by 0.4 percent, but they've been clearly decelerating, which is good. Um, he said basically that you know there was some numbers, there was a few numbers that were stuck. You know, he started kind of trace, tracing back his prediction last week, saying you know there might be a few numbers that are still stuck in the number in, in the. Inflation numbers are going to show, you know, some hesitation for him to drop it even further than what he was expecting. But um, he he thinks the summer will be favorable for rates. You know, he's expect he's expecting shelter costs to come down and, you know, crest and they're coming down, which is going to show in the numbers here in June and July. And, um, you know, you're saying that following this inflation data that basically the market is – basically pracing in a hundred percent uh chance of a 25 basis point rate cut in september yeah uh, saying that they're clearly not believing the fed who's you know who are saying that they're not going to cut this year so i mean the fed has not been believable this last two years anyway so he thinks that could help the bonds but overall um you know the trend is your friend and, well, uh, it's interesting that they go from 5.0 to 4.9 and go, that's favorable. And that, what, did eggs go down 10 cents? I mean, <laughs> yeah. It's so close. So Yeah. I, I just good. think that if you over look at the overall trend, you know, I guess, you know, the last 
year or so, I've been saying you've been, I've been trying to segment this stuff in six to eight months periods. And this last couple of months, you can kind of see where the numbers are coming out and things are a little bit more subdued. We're not seeing those 70, 80, you know, those really wild swings on a daily basis that when the news comes out, I mean, it was kind of like today the news came out and markets like, yep, super. And then the bonds just kind of went along their merry way. So it wasn't a heartbreaking you know, day today, which sometimes it can really cause indigestion. And um, you know, like I said, I think pulling back and not you know getting so caught up in the day by day, week by week, month by month numbers. I'm just looking at the overall, you know, that's this trend, you know, that we're kind of seeing, and hopefully it bodes well for a little bit softer rates here in the next couple of months. Well, it's going to be interesting to watch, that's for sure, because look at this chart here. I wanted to pull up, and this is sales per year. Um, look look at how we've been going down since November. And mm -hmm. even though we're seeing, you know, it illustrates once again that we've got just enough volume with the low inventory that we've got there to keep prices uh, kind of coming up slightly. But when I look at this chart, it tells me, yep, we have an affordability problem. And because uh, it's clearly sales are way down. Now, I was on the uh, podcast. Rick was on the Saks Realty podcast last night and he did fabulous. And he was so, saying that it's just brisk as all get out in Florida and multiple offers. Um, he said he saw one that said, you have to have your offer in by midnight. Be prepared to offer your highest and best along with an escalation clause, you know, back to the old nonsense again. And, mm -hmm. uh, and the same with uh, the gal that was on from Massachusetts. They're back to, I had no idea the Northeast was that hot, but back mm -hmm. to overbidding and, and waiving inspections again. And so you just sit back and make, man, please don't do that again. And we're looking here at our asking prices. Average list price per square foot is really edging up. People are saying, okay, let's see what we can get this spring. And uh, they're giving it a shot. And the Cromford Market Index is probably the only glimmer of hope when you look down here in that the demand has kind of flatlined a little bit. And when I look at my seven day moving average, I can see that as well. See how it's gone down. Mm -hmm. There we are. We're back again. I think we hit our peak in demand in April and now we're starting to, to dip back down as we get closer to the summer. And, but Jackie, you mentioned last week, I mean, is it possible that the that the closings are down just because, once again, the buyers can't find what they want? Well, I think there's a couple reasons uh, behind it. So right now, I think demand is down just a tad because we always, always, every single year, even in our frenzy time, the last couple of years, we slow down from about mid-May to the end of May. And that's because you've got so many things going on. You've got Mother's Day, you've got graduation, you've got kids getting out of school. There's That has always been that way. There's always this little, for as long as I've been in the business, there's always this little tiny lull in toward, you know, the middle of May to the end of May. The other thing I think is that a lot of demand, and I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I think a lot of demand was pulled forward. When we had such low interest rates, I think there was a lot of people that they may have planned on moving in a couple of years. And so they moved it up because the rates were so good. And then the next thing I think is affordability. I think there's a lot of people sidelined. Now, I have had quite a few buyers come out of the woodwork in the last couple of weeks that are saying we're ready and we're going to adjust our criteria and so they're going on the outskirts where, you know, I had one gentleman, he just flew into town. Um, I didn't even know he was coming uh, until the night before. And he just flew into town. He said, I got my house in escrow in, in, back in Florida and I'm ready to buy. And he was looking in at one point, he was around the 400 price point. That was before, and, and that was last year when he was thinking about buying. And um now he's down in the lower threes and he's like, that's okay. I, I, I'm just going to stick with what I need to stick with. And so he's looking on the outskirts. We're looking at Maricopa, Casa Grande and Buckeye, but a lot of people are starting to make some adjustments. And, you know, again, my biggest fear is if we don't build inventory and those rates get down to the high fives, 
I don't want to see the frenzy start all over again. Yeah, it seems like we're trending a little bit that way. You you kind of have the same fear, Ruby? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Although I do have some clients in Indianapolis. I have one. Um, they're under contract here on a contingency. Um, and they have this beautiful home in Indianapolis that's custom home built. And they were sure that it was going to go like overnight, basically. And they don't have an offer yet. They get the feedback that the pricing is fine, but um, they still don't have an offer. So kind of getting a little bit scary here for their contract we have here. So I don't know. Well, watching too, I mean, the news is pretty bleak financially when you watch the news because you know we're we've got these budget negotiations and the ceiling and all that stuff but when you look at the bond market um like pat you just said it's not volatile so they're just flicking they know we see this circus every time this comes around it's eventually going to work itself out the only thing has changed is the june bonds are paying considerably more than longer bonds right pat mm -hmm. yeah you mean the short term? You mean short term versus long term rates? Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're still inverted. But there's, but there's no volatility in mortgage rates and no disruption saying, well, we're going to default on our on our yeah. payments. We never have, never will. But they're still going to call each other names. It's going to be an absolute joke for the rest of the month. And the, uh, I want to turn the radio off. You know. <laughs> Where's the music? <laughs> yeah. So, because it really gets out of control. It's a shame we have that kind of a system, I guess. But I mean, he's making uh, Pat a star. Wake, wake up, Rick. Wake up. <laughs> oh. Man, I, you know, when you have satellite, it shows you on your phone. Like right now, it says online. And just a moment ago, it said searching. I was like, well, you had it. Don't let go. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You know, don't go anywhere. So I apologize for all the uh, spinning that's going on there. Yeah. But look, I apologize for the system problems. I'm going to get Elon on the phone as soon as we're done. I want to tell everybody to uh, be safe out there and have a good weekend. It's interesting to see how rates really didn't move that much today. I was kind yeah. of expecting a lot of fireworks, but uh, it didn't happen. But we'll hold our breath. And I'm kind of glad it didn't. Yeah. You know, like, right, Pat? I'm glad, you know, it just show it. You know, sometimes it's not just what the information comes out, but how the market reacts to the information. That's what I look at, too, because um, even on intraday, in, the intraday trading within a, just one day, you can see that the market will, the bonds will come out sloppy and then they'll firm up and they're like, OK, we're just testing a low. And it, it's really interesting. I mean, that's why I, I probably have a tendency to watch it too much. But it, I think it's important just to get a trend of feel for, you know, trying to on rates as far as where rates are going. And um, you can see how like this the other last week, and he Barry put a lock, you know, he, he put a lock recommendation on one during the day. The next day, I'm like, you know, I think this is a head fake. And sure enough, it came back nicely, you know. So you can kind of see how it trades. It's almost these bonds are trading like stocks nowadays. So yeah, it figures, but it's it good. Figures. It was good to see that it came out subdued, and I think just the overall that just tells me the picture that the market's kind of getting it. That you know, inflation is kind of subsiding a little bit. It's still there, no doubt about it. But I think um, it's not the pressure cooker is off like we saw before about eight nine months ago. So all right, well, thank you everybody. I'm going to cut it short and uh, go out and stare at the sky and see why the satellite. Keeps moving. And, uh, okay. There's probably a bear out there right, shaking it around. <laughs> yeah, it's a, or a tree. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take care. All right Thank Here you guys. Have a good